What's up, guys? Kicking this one off. We are in part two. We are doing the build out of this thousand gallon aquarium. We just finished putting the tile in. We built the bubble wall on the members only live stream. This is directly after. Now I'm going to get working on installing the bubble wall. But first, I wanted to go ahead and show you guys this little rock formation I built out of just junk I had laying around. I'm going to go ahead and mortar this all together. I think this will look pretty cool in there. It'll kind of mimic what I've got going on in this thousand gallon over here. Okay, so here we go. I'm pulling my parts down in here. A little bit of echo. So we've got just normal aquarium silicone. We've got soft tubing. We've got my bubble wall that's pre-made from the, the, the live stream. Now let's put this together. Okay, the main skeleton of the bubble wall is complete. You can see it's a little bit flimsy, but that's where the silicone comes in. We're gonna put some in the corner, some across the back end, and one up the back wall. Okay, so I'm putting down the silicone. As you can see, I'm putting on a generous amount and I'm putting the bubble wall down in the silicone and I'm coming back with another generous amount of silicone to try and lock that in. And here I'm going back and smoothing it out so it looks nice and pretty. Okay, the bubble wall is now installed and as you can see, there's a spot on every tile. So the back tiles are secured down against the back wall, they won't flip up. Now I'm going to do a little spot on each of these end tiles and I'll be good to go, won't have no worry about this. We're going to let this dry till tomorrow, then I'll finish hooking up the uprights, hook it up to air, and then we can start decorating and thinking about water and stock and filtration. All right, I promise you guys this tank will be uh, full, bubble wall in, and partially decorated. So let's get started on the decorating. Okay, while we're back here, take a look at that. There's a bunch, and I mean a bunch of bluegill and babies right there. I don't know if you guys can see them. They're just little black silhouettes. There's some more over there, but right over down yonder, all them colorful shadows, those are koi. Look at them, there's probably about 10 of them just right there beneath the water. Look at that. There are so many koi in here, it is ridiculous. So right now we have all these different air stones in here. There's four different sources of air. Plus there, look at them koi just running beneath the surface. This is about eight foot deep and these koi are loving this mud pond. I am feeding it from the river and constantly pumping in water because I know it's a heavy bio load. So it's got the natural filtration, plus it's got you know the pass through and the extra oxygenation. But Brian is coming here soon and we have to drain this and catch out about a hundred koi, which that is going to be a fun video. I'm back here at my little rock surplus. I got all these out of the pond when we were uh, cleaning it out. But I want to pick out a couple stones here and figure out the right one. I just want to do a little arch it in there so the catfish can get under, kind of like a, a Stonehenge type arch. But I figured these are the best ones to do it. All right, I got big rock here. I got them three small ones. And I still got that normal formation I think I'm going to use in the tank down there. So I'm going to build something out of these for this tank over here. Check it out guys. So you guys remember this planted tank here? Everyone's doing good, but I added in these 
Madagascar lace plants. These things are so cool. It was one big one. I went ahead and divided it into two. So we got some sort of separation and variety in plants. We've got the crypt forest over here. We've got, you know, just variety everywhere. We've got swords, uh, Anubis. But I went ahead and took everything out of this corner and put the lace plants in. How cool are they? Okay, so looking at this tank, you guys can see I have in between this uh, two overflows here. That little rock formation I built that down there would kind of match some of these stones I have in here so I can add to it and just have that center rock feature in between the overf uh, overflows. So I think that'll work out way better for this tank. It'll give me a chance to get in there, clean off the tile, which I've been dying to do. I just haven't had much time. And now with this tank over here, I went ahead and cut my airline so I can hook up the bubble wall and we've got the decorations in. So I'm gonna play with the positioning. I might add some more columns like going up in the back corner and bridging it over to here. But for, for now, I got that in here. For one, it's gonna help hold that, the, down the tiles and uh, it gives the fish a place to hide and you know a little nooks and crannies to hide behind and call themselves you know home i might put a big tall fancy plant giant in that corner right there about three four foot tall and then call this tank done just leave it a nice open footprint for my big monsters to grow out have my feeding area like right here i think that'll be really really cool just like that, the bubble wall's hooked up. I did all my final checks. Now we've got the leak test. I'm sure this tank will not leak, but we're gonna fill it up, test it overnight, and make sure she holds before we add fish. A moment of truth. This is the most exciting part. Let her rip. Oh, what is that? That's water going in the tank. We have water, guys. Check it out. Now I'll be able to check the level on the tank. It should be pretty good. And uh, slowly but surely this beast will get filled up. How exciting is that? You guys have been seeing this tank sit empty for a little over a year now. But you know, good things take time. And for those of you guys that were worried about my hose that was on here. For one, I pushed it up on a li little bit more but it needed to stretch out before I could get it on more and that is a non-pressurized line so you don't have to worry about it popping off. It's literally just a gravity line falling from there, daylighting into the pond. So there's not gonna be no back pressure, no head pressure. It's not gonna be pressurized at all. So it'll never leak. Don't worry, all my pressurized lines are always PVC. All right, I don't think you guys get just how big this tank is. It's eight foot long. Four foot from front to back and four foot tall on a 30 inch stand. I'm six foot one. This tank is taller than me. This is a very massive, large aquarium. And it is solid acrylic all the way around. Two inch thick material. Like, look at that. That is some thick acrylic. This is going to be a beautiful tank. I, I know some of you guys would be like, that is a masterpiece. It should be set in the middle of the room. Well, that's okay, but this tank fits our purpose here at the Ohio Fish Rescue, so we want to go ahead and make sure we give the best life to our fish. If it means sticking the, the tank in the corner, that's okay. Look at that. The level on that puppy's pretty darn smack dead on. And look at that bubble wall. See all them bubbles of purring back there? We'll see how it really runs as soon as it gets a little bit of pressure on it. It's a linear air pump. So it's running all these tanks in this whole line, just like we have two running on the whole system in the fish room. But this is going to take a while for it to fill. The reason I'm filling it with such a small hose is because this is an acrylic tank. You don't want to fill it extremely fast because it could, you know, stretch and pop your seam. So you want to fill acrylic tanks gradually. Plus this is a leak test. It's being filled for the first time here. Everything's go going to, you know, kind of relax in, in place. So th this is, you know, a marathon, not a race. So I promised you guys that we would have water in the tank. Well, look at that. We've got water in the tank. I'm going to continue to let, let this fill. And uh, in the next couple of videos, if I am happy, I, of course, got to get the 
own filtration on this tank still, but I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. Not gonna bore you guys with the logistics of that. You know how filtration goes on tanks. But then in the next couple of videos, you'll start seeing fish go in. We've got this thousand gallon and we've got this thousand gallon over here. I just have the gold Dorado and the blue Azul bass in here. I'm gonna, you know, redo the skate, probably take this plastic piece out, fix my rocks up a, a li little bit there. I'm gonna give some life to that Frontosa tank. And of course, put that new rock formation in this tank as well, get it all cleaned out. So these babies are back to looking spick and span. So we really do love pushing content out for you guys here at OFR, but we are going to up the quality for you guys like I've been pr promising you. I hope you guys are going to start no noticing not only, you know, the thumbnails, the titles, and the actual video content itself. I just want to do be better for you guys so we can all grow and start doing even better things here at the Ohio Fish Rescue. Because it, it's fun, you know, doing all, all this work. I understand it can get repetitive sometimes, and that, that's okay. Some of you guys just want to follow along and see what, what we do. Well, I want to take it up to that next step. So everyone who participates in, in the polls, I really do love the constructive crit criticism. And I do read the comments. And I, you know, I try and improve where we can. So hope you guys enjoyed today's vi video. We will catch you on the next one. As always, stay fishy, my friends.